Absolutely. And Sharky, I gotta say, like, we, we talk about winners' brackets and we talk about losers' brackets. I wouldn't want to be playing in the losers' brackets at this point. No, it's it's incredibly tough to have going in the lower bracket. I mean, you just we have a the CTWC 2022 runner up in the lower bracket now. So now there's even more stakes. It's like, oh, no, if I get knocked down from the upper bracket, I might have to go up against Fractal, who yeah. by that by this time could have actually fixed some of the double rotation issues that he was experiencing and having a Fractal close to his full potential. I mean, nobody wants to play against him like that. No, no, it feels like the only difference is you'll just be playing more games against scary, scary opponents. Now, of course, one thing I do want to mention as we talk about these head-to-heads, these one versus ones, well, we have another competition coming here for the Honda Fan Cup. I got to mention that because next month, they're going to put on a Halo Infinite 1v1 tournament. Put your skills to the test for $20,000 across four weeks of qualifiers and a finale. That's January 7th. Registration will be opening soon at start.gg slash Xbox. A huge thank you to Honda for making the Honda Fan Cup possible. And of course, you can check out the all new HRV in action in the chat link that we have put there in chat. That plug, awesome, fantastic, 1v1, this is what we strive for. But I want to talk real quick about what we had seen before. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to go back from before. Let's go ahead because we have, as Sharky mentioned, we've got a big matchup coming up here, Chris. And I, I, it, does, it goes without saying, everybody here has proven themselves. But boy, this is the scary matchup that I know those people with the different play styles, and as you mentioned before, they're, they're going to be coming out swinging. Absolutely, final boss potential here. Current reigning Tetris World Champion, Master of Rolling, uh, you know, breaking all the records, you know, getting, <laughs> yeah, just uh, a really mounted of a challenge here for Broden, but Broden performing so well that last round. Uh, what will we see? Will we see uh, uh, the rolling be a factor? Will we see the 29 play? We weren't able to watch those matches. So we'll see if Eric has actually ground out the games the same way Fractal did and is able to roll here on the TEC version of Classic Tetris. And uh, Broden, we know, able to actually survive well into 29, even as a tapper. So let's go. Let's go indeed. Uh, Sharky, I do want to ask a question. As someone, of course, who is newer to the scene here, uh, we talk about and we see um, esports and tournaments uh, with varying play styles, varying times. Is it going to be a factor that these we've got Broden coming off that momentum and win going up against Eric? Do you think that's going to be a factor in that gameplay? He's coming in hot. Oh yeah, 100%. Momentum is a huge driving factor in basically everything. And when you have the momentum, having such a powerful game that Broden had in that last game, that momentum could be what is needed in order to get something started up against Eric. Because actually in this particular matchup, their match history, both of them are tied. So this is essentially a match to break the tie. I mean, it do we, do we call it a grudge match? I don't know. Probably not. But either way, if you've got a tied tournament, if you're looking at two people who could potentially take on the other and do so in an impressive fashion, I mean, that's that's the deliciousness that we as viewers like to see. Right, Chris? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, anything can happen. Uh, we saw rolling wasn't invincible against a tapper or a hybrid last round. Will that be a factor this time? Or has Eric ICX mastered doing the hyper or the doing the rolling on TEC where uh, Fractal uh, hasn't quite been able to uh, showcase that yet. Absolutely. And I think one of the things I have noticed throughout these last couple of rounds is that a lot of the really great players, the players that make it through the next winner's bracket round, they've mastered the art of using the survival to their advantage, Sharky. It's not just surviving when they clean up and dig out. It's thriving and doing so in a way that can literally turn the tables. Yeah, there are definitely pivotal moments where Scotto, has Scotto not survived, then we'd be looking at a different bracket right now. And same could be said for Fractal. Fractal getting out of certain situations, if Fractal would have gotten out of them just a little bit more efficient, we wouldn't have games that were around, you know, 30,000 points whenever going into level 29. Absolutely. Well, I see the levels have already started, so I'm going to see you guys in just a few minutes. Good job, everybody. Let's go. Thank you, Kate. And Broden with a one point advantage, push down points. Now, this particular matchup is 
kind of interesting because we already mentioned, you know, competitively, they're one and one up against each other. But Eric, before Huff ended up getting a higher 1.3 later on that match, Eric was the one that took the world record away from Broden in the first or the second week of the Honda Cup. That's right. So could, Broden could be coming in there as like, you took my world record, now I'm gonna try and send you to the lower bracket. It could happen as, uh, you know, rolling isn't quite invincible yet, uh, especially here uh, on TEC, so, uh, but I haven't seen any Mr. Ostomeric yet, so we shall see. Broden was super great uh, in the last matchup with all those adjustments. Uh, great survival skills, those amazing digs that we saw versus Lei in that last round, and that's got to be some momentum coming into this match, even if it's against current Tetris World Champion Eric ICX. Yeah, when we talk about, you know, Broden's gameplay in the first matchup against Lei, one thing that comes to mind is just the sheer amount of efficiency Broden was able to have on level 18. There were some issues that Broden ran to in some games in the post-transition, most notably the first one, but the sheer efficiency that Broden is able to have, that is the kind of efficiency that you need, and we saw that was kind of like a win condition for Scotto up against Fractal. Yeah, it looked like uh, Broden went then all guns blazing, you know, getting that 600k transition right off the bat. So uh, that could be, you know, when you put the pedal to the middle like that early on, maybe you're gauging to see just how far you can push, and then you can throttle back after that. Yeah, but so far, the game is actually incredibly close in terms of efficiency. Broden has burned just around, I believe, eight lines. So really efficient game. And... Eric is only down by 5,000 points, so... Yeah, we are neck and neck. Yeah, things got a little bit tricky at the beginning. It was, you know, a sizable drought, but also, you know, these players have the discipline to manage these droughts very well. Yeah, both well, these players just at the pinnacle of skill for this game. Eric being the world champion and, uh, you know, breaking all these records and Broden Dab also having uh, been a record holder of some of those same records. And Broden Dab actually making it into top eight, which is uh, after taking a year hiatus from the CTWC, uh, it's an amazing strong statement for a return. And uh, I think the most amazing thing about Broden Dab's uh, play is, uh, so Broden Dab still taps and uh, you know, he had a little comment about why that is, and his explanation was that he's just lazy. Yeah, to the, I mean, cheers of, <laughs> to the cheers of the crowd. Yeah, I mean, rolling, it takes a lot of effort, and, you know, if, it, it, it's a lot of work. So I definitely yeah. could uh, <laughs> contend with Broden there. So, yeah, I mean, with uh, a year hiatus and not, you know, the same amount of time put into... Uh, rolling, we could potentially see a Broden in the future with rolling be possibly unstoppable and part, you know, once again, part of this next generation of Tetris Masters. Already a part of this next generation of Tetris Masters. Looks like we have a small miss shot from Eric. Nothing too serious as Eric's score right now is actually phenomenal. We are looking at, you know, 600k possible transition yep. from Eric. Issue is Broden is also playing just a little bit more efficient. Yeah, so both players are gonna have some monster scores here, like we saw in that very first game today. So far, you know, both players cleaned up the well, just waiting on the long bar. There's one for Eric. Wow, Broden with such gutsy placements there, able to do it cleanly. Yeah, really just didn't want to burn there. Yeah, that that was aggressive, but it worked out. And the best players are going to work it out in a way that makes you think they knew what pieces were coming. Yeah, I mean, when you really take a deep dive in the stacking, a lot of these placements that are being mined, the topography of their board is arranged in a way to where it's accommodating of as many pieces as possible. That's, you know, the ideal stack. And these players are able to maintain that ideal formation of the board state. And they're even moving the pieces. When they see the next piece, they're making an adjustment to make the piece or the board more accommodating. Yeah, but things are about to start getting a lot more interesting because we are nearing level 19. 
we're gonna see Eric being able to utilize that rolling and we're gonna see how Broden's gonna deal with it because the scores are incredibly close. We are separated by just over a Tetris. Yeah, this is a really close game. Scores are gonna be monstrous. Broden hitting 600,000 points on transition right there. Eric not far behind. Eric having a couple of burns to give there. And yeah. does so efficiently. Broden is going to be able to use that first post transition long bar for a Tetris. Eric follows suit, but has a couple more complications now. Yeah, Broden definitely being the cleaner of the two players throughout this game. Showing the accuracy of tapping. Yeah, now to 100,000 point lead. Eric's going to chop it back down to 73,000. But these are some incredibly high scores here. Yeah. This is top level play at its best from two of the best in the world. Yeah, and based on Eric's prior performance in the Honda Cup, I mean, Eric getting all the way to, I believe, level 39 was the highest level that Eric managed to get to. You know, Broden needs this point advantage. Eight thirty-four wow. for Broden, seven thirty-three for Eric, and Eric actually with a misdrop. Yeah, we're seeing the, a similar situation to the Scotto versus Fractal match, where the roller is committing misdrops that lead to digs, and their tapping slash hybrid counterpart is able to pull ahead in the lead. That's what we're seeing here. Eric building up dangerously high now. Any misdrop there would be lethal. Is able to dig that back down though. Very nice burns. The issue is now Broden is up by 120,000 points. Pristine board. There it is. Another Tetris for Broden. 900,000 on level 24. Or this is going to be an amazing score here. Broden just tearing it up. Oh, it has to clo close the well there. Gets it back open. Nice burns from Tetris for Broden. 119,000 point lead at 940,000 points is a couple of Tetrises away from maxing out here. Hitting a million points. He only needs two more. There it is, boom, Tetris for Aaron. Well, Broden has been tearing it up. Eric or Eric has been able to basically burn it down and reset. Still now down by around 100,000 points. That's up but there Broden, it is. 1 million points. Eric with another misdrop, deciding to actually commit the long bar to fill in the dependency first. Wow. Kind of... Yeah, didn't have anywhere to go with that, but yeah. Uh, we discussed with it in the match between Fractal and Scotto how it is very important to have an ideal board state going in the 29, and we're kind of seeing Eric maintain this. In fact, Eric is only two Tetrises away from a max, but a 150,000 point lead. And wait, we can't forget something. There is a chase down timer in Tetris Effect Connected. That's right. And Broden can actually survive on 29, as we saw in the match versus Lay. And. Go up, Tetris for Broden, 229 line, so one more will get to level 29 speed. Kill screen. Eric on kill screen now, surviving quite is. well. So now Tapper versus Roller on the kill screen. Broden on that left side. Needs a couple burn. more lines. He's able to get the flat burns in there, but not and enough to survive that. Ooh, there was a Tetris right there, level 30. Now Eric just needs to chase down 100,000 points. That middle is getting dicey. Oh. Needs to get pieces over to the left here. Power of rolling on display here. Eric getting the job done. 90,000 points to chase down. And Broden actually got only a couple thousand points off of the, the former world record that he held. So he essentially almost matched his best game in TEC ever. And Eric just able to chop this lead down. Only needs 64,000 more points here. All right, able to get those pieces over to the left. A couple of tricky pieces, some dependencies forming. Oh, Tetris gets it built up. All right, gets a triple. Forced, forced to take a triple there. But it's there it is, Tetris. boom, Tetris for Eric. Only a couple thousand more points needed. One more line will do it. And there it is, Eric takes game number one, chasing down nearly 100. Wow. Oh no, chasing down over 100,000 points on post 29 play. Yeah, Broden just only able to survive a few moments after 29, but Eric showing that rolling gets the job done, able to complete the chase down.
And we've got the room set up, so the chase down timer will show up. And uh, here we go for round two. Three, two, one, Tetris. Nice little combination of pieces right there. It looks like they're able to set up the room so that the winds are all lined up and everything, so it's looking good. There goes some yeah. burns. Having to take some burns early on and, you know, I guess a good example if you want to essentially a TLDR of CTWC, what Eric was able to do in the last game was a good TLDR because there were several games where Eric's opponents was just simply outplayed them before 29, but the sheer survivability that Eric has in his back pocket allowed him to chase down scores of, you know, 100,000, 150,000, 200,000 point deficits. And, right. you know, and that's something that Broden has to contend with. Yeah. You need the accuracy, though. There's a miss drop there by Eric. So, once again, rolling seeming to, you know, have infinite survival potential, but you still got to nail those placements and not make any miss drops. Eric solving that miss drop very cleanly, though. Yeah, Broden actually not really able to capitalize too much. So you're going to stay kind of like in a neck and neck position here. Maybe a one Tetris lead for Broden. Yeah. And Broden having to uh, move the well around. Let's see if Broden moves it back over to the right. Looks like that's going to be the case. Yep, we're same line count separated by half a single in terms of point values. So yeah, we are neck and neck here. We are neck and neck. I was watching the Forza stream earlier and uh, noticed that their casters were also using the term neck and neck. So that will be the unifying term of the day for you, uh, the Fan Cup fans out there. Neck and neck. Yeah. So far, though, really close game. You can tell that both players had a slightly rough start with the opener just based on how close their score is. And it's around the lower lower end of where you're looking for for you know a high 500 potentially even 600k transition so with an, enough efficiency as possible but currently these players both have a long way to go yep let's see if sure. eric turns this into a jury or if it burns off the top i think eric is going to burn off the top and that's going to get broden half tetris lead Say if there was actually one thing that is uh, more distinct about uh, Eric's playstyle when we take a look at all the rollers we have in the field, I'd say that Eric is the most disciplined and really tries to have an emphasis on survivability as opposed to going just, you know, all in for efficiency. That's important to have, and that could be the determining factor. Uh, and also I noticed that Eric, very content to make the burns when necessary. Doesn't necessarily need to get the biggest lead, but will outlast you in the end when it all comes down to level 29 in speed. So that could be a powerful strat. Yeah, but of course, still has to be accurate. I mean, you got to make it to 29 in order to, you know, reveal your ace, if you will. That's right. There's been, you know, a couple situations in this game alone where it's like, uh, not sure if, you know, this is an ideal position because, you know, in addition to you being able to move the pieces over, sometimes you just need the pieces to cooperate. Yeah. Eric missing a spin there, but burns out of it, no problem. And oh, Broden actually missing an eye spin there as well. And missing an eye spin in that particular formation would have been a prolonged and costly dig, but Broden found a way to navigate out of it with only yeah. three burn lines. That is insane. Yeah. Might have to look at that later. Yeah, both these players are experts at minimizing the amount of digging, the amount of burn lines, and uh, that's what you need to do to uh, excel in competitive Tetris. Yeah. 416 for Broden, 405 for Eric. Close Eric's game. Slightly ahead in lines but not enough for Broden to generate a massively like what we saw in game number one.
Yeah, both these players having the momentum, both in winner's bracket having come out of their successive matches. Yeah, of course, you know, losing this will send them down to the lower bracket. But, you know, already winning their first match, they've already, you know, increased what they will be able to earn. All right, yeah. You, the more you advance in the bracket, then you're already in the money. Yeah, everyone that's playing today is going to get paid something. But the further you advance, the more you get paid. And, of course, they're fighting for that first place spot, trying to get, you know, $3,000. And yeah. in the case yeah. of Eric... This is, you know, another championship right after CTWC, so... Oh, I know. Yeah. They can adopt in a year. All right, Broden. and Broden is going to get saved just in time for transition. You want to get your board in shape right before uh, the speed change there, and Broden gets it done. Eric with some misdrops and uh, is going to need to do some cleaning so this is Broden's chance to uh extend the lead now what a nice line spin over there from Eric being able to find that particular spin really gonna help kind of burn this out might only spin a level burning with something that or actually gonna knock down a dirty Tetris into cleaning wow. up uh, so Eric was <laughs> demonstrating that yeah uh all year basically able to score the tetris where they come and that's a vital tool if you're able to miss drop because it'll turn your garbage into a tetris oh that adjustment over there for broden for a dirty tetris as well these players just making these last second adjustments to be efficient in areas that yeah. you know even as casters i didn't think i'd see something like that no that's it's the stuff for the highlight reel that's the stuff we're going to be studying you know in the next year this is the next generation of skill our players you know with the ability to survive play at level 29 speeds and make adjustments that we didn't think were possible yeah you know having the ability to recognize is like oh wait if i just rotate this piece one extra more or you know move this piece a little bit to the left i can get a dirty tetris out of this and you know keep a clean stack because the lead really hasn't changed broden is still up by thirty-one thousand. they're matching each other's efficiency which yeah. in the long run could actually be a problem for broden that's right so yeah broden wanting to get as many points as possible we know Broden can survive a little bit on 29, but we know Eric can just go and go and go and last um, until, you know, perhaps the endurance runs out. But uh, we haven't been there yet. <laughs> yeah. Broden can survive while Eric essentially lives on 29. But 892 to now 931, still separated by this 30,000 point metric, which in terms of points, that's not a lot. That's only, you know, one Tetris at these later levels. Right, and that's gonna be even less significant past that. There's Tetris for both Eric and Broden. Eric starting to push, you know, the boundaries a little bit more, going a tad bit more aggressive than what we are used to seeing. Yeah, Broden playing aggressive, gets a Tetris for the max out, one million points. And same can be said for Eric. Yeah, and we are at, oh, the adjustment over there by Broden. Wow, trying to really avoid taking any burn lines, trying to squeeze burns. this level yeah. for every Tetris that he can. He's able to knock down one. Wow. For another. Super efficient. Literally a flawless 28 over there for Broden. Okay, once again, yeah. better shape. Good flat burns, that's what you need to do to survive here. Yeah, needs a couple of cooperating that. pieces. Oh, able to tap that all the way over. Look at that. 29 yep. battles, 70,000 points in the lead. Broden doing what it takes as a tapper to survive here in 29. And Broden, again, if you look at the score, this is uh, uh, very close to his PB as well. In fact, a couple more lines and we're going to be looking at a 1.2. And there it is, 1.2 wow. for Broden. Broden going and going, showing that movement is still possible and Eric also just looking really good really clean the power of rolling on Eric's side now, level 32 for both players Eric was trying to get set up for a Tetris eyepiece came a tad bit too late so gonna just take a triple we'll weather the storm this is amazing 
Look at this. Both players at the bottom. Burning those and lines. Surviving. Broden's the tapper. Yep, Broden's the tapper. This is insane. Tapping is not dead. Tapping is not dead. Say it with me. Tapping is not dead. Tapping is Let's not go. dead. 1.25 million. And oh, Broden with a couple of misdrops. But I think that might be a PB for Broden. The issue is that's only 50,000 point chase down for Eric. So yeah, not much of a chase down left for Eric and Eric just getting it done. Also surviving for prolonged periods. Minute and 40 on the clock, so plenty of time. You know, Broden might want to examine the strategy of pushing down because if this chase down happened sooner because of the push down, then that might have made a, made a difference. But it looks like Eric is down to 3,000 points, 2,000, and does it with a double. And uh, Eric's gonna take that round. I mean, that is insane. You know, going from a high 1.1 into a 1.2. And if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure that's Broden's PB. So before Eric and Huff would have came in, that would have been the equivalent of a world record. And once again, level, level 39 over here for Eric. Wow. That's ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, thanks to the Honda Fan Cup, records are being smashed, broken, and torn apart. Torn asunder from their places. Wow. This is Tetris. And I believe that's the first back... No, it's going to be the second second back-to-back 1.1 plus score that we've seen here in TEC from both players. You know, there was the Huff versus uh, Eric matchup. And so... Just what a phenomenal way to <laughs> kind of conclude game number two. And now Broden... Yeah. I mean, there's not much that Broden could have done. I mean, he played as efficient as he could. Eric just so happened to keep up with efficiency on 19 on the post transition speeds. They were both absolutely phenomenal. Oh, yeah, the survival there. That's exactly what you want to see. And uh, seeing a tapper, you know, last that, that long, post 29, is nothing short of inspiring. So now I have to wonder, you know, will, will Broden take up rolling or will tapping, you know, continue to live on 2023 and beyond? But so far, it looks like Broden is off to a better start here. I'm seeing the eyepiece is coming uh, pretty often as well. So could be seeing, you know, another situation where both players are able to get that kind of 600K transition that you look for. Hey, Eric, making up some points there. Yeah, a little bit piece dependent though. So it is going to be relying on the eyepiece. Fortunately, one does come. Doesn't really burn out anything yet. So gonna have to take a couple of burns here. Yeah. Oh, opens it right back up. And oh, Broden set up for a dirty Tetris and the wow. eyepiece comes. Boom, Tetris for Broden. Yeah, when you talk about aggressive play, that's the one. You know, you're built up that high. Go for that dirty Tetris and Broden making it happen there. Eric's doing the same. Yeah, and it doesn't get the right pieces to make it a dirty Tetris. It's going to be I'm a thinking... split triple. But really great job on both Broden and Eric to kind of deal with that piece sequence. And, you know, that's one of the beauties of, you know, having the same piece that you can really see, you know, both of these players, how they're able to manage. And that yeah. adjustment by Eric to <laughs> knock down a double Tetris. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, both players just capable of adjustments and just uh, not only making the right plays, but then doing them in a context that's almost inhuman. Just frames worth of precision that you need to have to do that. Look at all those Tetris raining from Eric's side, but Broden's still up to a 130,000 point lead. What is going on? These players are just out of this world today. In terms of burn lines, Broden right now is burned very few. He's going to have to burn some because honestly, those pieces were very difficult to navigate through or rather to try and find a super efficient solution. That's as good as it gets. Look at that. Oh, 
but Eric is able to find some efficiency as Broden is having to try and burn through this. Finally able to open up the well, knock down the Tetris. Yeah, and cool. you actually mentioned it, you know, one of the strats might be to push down and you can actually see Broden is employing that push down strategy here. That's right, ahead by 10 lines. It was for, for a moment there. And, I mean, that's kind of a tough situation because the way, oh, actually, this is a tough situation. Broden needs an eyepiece set up for a dirty Tetris, but an eyepiece needs to come. This is no longer a Tetris. It's going to be a triple. It's still going to survive. But yeah, left that possibility open for as long as he could. And gets burned back down, but that's going to cost some lines and uh, cut the lead in half. Very, still not a friendly situation for Broden. Still yeah. having to navigate through this. Yeah, he's starting and to open it up. Had to cover the well, put weight on that there. Okay. Yeah, just not ideal pieces coming to solve this when it's needed. Yeah, it's going to be a dig. Yeah, and with that Tetris, Allen is now falling or Broden is now falling behind Eric. Yeah. Just this dig is uh, taking a lot longer than he Ooh. was counting on. Going for that placement might have been a tad bit risky and we we are only eight lines away from the transition. Oh no. Couple of S's. Broden's in trouble. Broden is in trouble. And Broden's gonna top and out of four thirty six. And Eric is gonna complete the sweep, taking all three rounds and the match. But what a Absolutely. performance for Broden. I mean, that is insane. Broden getting, you know, the back-to-back 1.19 plus scores. And, of course, you know, Eric chasing down those two games in 29, really showing you why he is your world champion for 2022. Yeah, Broden was strong in those games, but Eric is just showing why he's a classic Tetris world champion, current reigning champion able to just play on 29 and uh, line out or chase down or whatever it takes to take the victory, Eric ICX is capable of it. 100%. Hey, gang, uh, I got to tell you, there, there, if there's one thing I have learned from this is that Eric deserves the WC next to his name. That is for sure. But let's real quick talk about some of the things we saw. Specifically, uh, you know, I think there's a theme here in terms of setting yourself up correctly to take on those transitions into the higher levels here, Sharky. And I feel like we just saw Eric do that with deadly precision. Yeah, I mean, and if we were to make a comparison match between Fractal and Scotto, Fractal does have the ability to roll, but the biggest difference is that Eric, anytime they reach 29 or generally the time they reach transition even at level 19 eric got the board to where okay i can survive this and be comfortable fractal was put under a lot of pressure being down by a tetris and that decider and making that mission up on 28 just was unreally able to consolidate the board into a comfortable position a comfortable position is an interesting phrase because i <laughs> and I'll and, and I will say this for Chris's benefit, tapping is not dead. If we saw it, we saw it in round number two. Once we headed past level 34. Mine blown. Yeah, you don't expect to see a tapper. Well, whatever what ended up happening was a lot of tappers turned to rolling. Uh, but Broden Damp retaining tapping, able to survive like that is like I said, nothing short of inspiring. Will we see Broden continue this? into the future or will Broden take up rolling? And uh, if Broden takes up rolling, will we see an invincible roller like we see in Eric ICX? Absolutely. And I think Sharky, that's, that's it, yeah, it's funny in the earlier rounds, when we had such a chasm between the rollers and the tappers and, and, and the dots, whatever, I, there was an element to this where I was like, what's the virtue of not rolling. I kept thinking, there's this is such like a big domination domination kind of playstyle, and yet here we are, watching air watching these these incredible people, these incredible players unfold their playstyle and say, no no no, tapping's not dead. I mean, obviously, you know, Eric came out on top here, but like, I feel like that was such an interesting moment of transition for me as a viewer watching this unfold for the very first time. 
Yeah, for a lot of people, I mean, rolling is a very hard technique to learn. And a lot of people, whenever they stick with their play style, they just want to prove like what they can do, push their play style to the limits. And I think Broden did a fantastic job getting, you know, not only being incredibly efficient, I mean, 1.19 in the first game and then 1.25 in the second game, back to back, carrying, you know, trying to prevent Eric from gaining momentum. I think Broden showed a really good job of, you know, how far tapping can be pushed here on TEC alone. Absolutely. And I want to bring back that phrase chase down because uh, first of all, I'm 100% stealing that. I love that phrase. I think it tells you, it, it says so much, Chris, about what these players are up against and more importantly, what they can do to attain that momentum, to wrangle it back again. Uh, I'm just curious. Eric showed us that he can do chases down more than 100,000 points, more than 100,000 points after level 29. You said it could be the biggest post-29 chase down in Honda Fan Cup history. Yeah, the chase down is critical. Uh, if your opponent has a massive lead, but you're able to play in 29, then it's all about managing your stack, making sure that you don't miss drop into a situation that you can't burn out of. You want to make sure that you don't end up uh, in a situation where you can't move the piece all the way over to the left or to the right. Uh, and uh, and burn and uh, Eric was doing just that and able to complete pretty much all the chase downs.